यशोमतीनंदना भ्रजा बारं धागरा गोकुल रंजन Good. Hey, 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 go, pipa, nandanam, adham, manoha. Go pipa nandan mada manohar go kaliya damo navida ha ha kaliya damo navida ha ha Hamala Hani Ham Hamiyavi Lasa Hamala Hani Ham Hamiyavi Lasa Vipir Purandar Namanar Garbar Vamsi Vadan Hasuk Bahasai Hey, Pajajan of Fallen, Sudakula, Nasana, Pajajan of Fallen, Sudakula, Nasana, Han Handa, Guran, Raku, Ha, 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 Nanda Gauran Rakku Ha 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 Govinda Madhav Navanita Tathka Ha Ha Govinda Madhav Navanita Tathka Ha Ha Sindhara Nanda Gopala Sindhara Nanda Gopala Dhyamuna Tata Chai Gopi Prasanna Hara Jhavuna Tata Chava Gopi Vosana Hara Rasa Rasika Kripa Mohoya Rasa Rasika Kripa Mohoya Shri Aravala Vrindavana Natukbhara Shri Aravala Vrindavana Natukbhara Shri Aravala Vrindavana Natukbhara Bhakti Vinoda Swaha Srila Bhakati Vinoda Swaha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krita Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Ram, Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krita Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna, Nitai Gaur, Goranga. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Oh, hey. Jaya Pancha Tadva Pancha Tadva Pancha Tadva Jai Pancha Tadva Jai Gora Nithai Gora Nithai Gora Nithai Jai Gora Nithai Hey Nithai Ghor Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Nithai Ghor Hari Bhav Nam Jaya Jaya Prabhupad 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 Hey Jai Jai Prabhu Pai Prabhu Pai Prabhu Pai Jai Prabhu Pai Gaur Premanande Shri Prabhupad Ki Jai Nesamati Nandana Brajabada Nagara Gokula Ranjana Jai. Kana, that's Krishna. That was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's favorite bhajan, actually. When he was departing the world, he asked that bhajan be sung. So, really, so all it is is just the names of Krishna and his different leelas in Vrindavan. Okay, so Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 16, The Peyo Vrata Process of Worship, Text Number 20. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasude Vaya Home is 
non-different than Hare Krishna. It's actually the same. There's no difference. Powerful. Okay, so... Upatstitav Swapurusham Bhagavatam Janardanam Sarvabhutam Guhavasam Vasudevam Jagat Gurum Upastista Swapurusham Bhagavatam Janardhanam Sarvabhuta Guhavasam Vasudeva Jagat Gurum Upastista Swapurusham Bhagavatam Janardhanam Sarvabhuta Guhavasam Vasudevam Jagat Gurum Upastiswa. Just try to worship Purusham, the Supreme Person, Bhagavatam, the Personality of Godhead, Janardanam, who can kill all the enemies, Sarva Bhuta Guhava Sam. Living within the core of the heart of everyone. Vasudevam. Vasudeva. Krishna. Who is all pervading. And is the son of Vasudeva. Jagat Gurum. The spiritual master and teacher of the whole world. So Kishap is uh, now going to give, give the ultimate instruction to his wife 
a DTC wants to um, somehow or other bring back the demigods in their superior position. The Bali and his armies have taken over the heavenly planets. The demigods went into hiding. And now she's concerned the demigods are her children. Many of them are her direct sons. And so now she wants to uh, bring them back. So um, she explains that to her husband. Now he's giving her the uh, way to do it. He says, my dear Aditi, engage in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the master of everything, who can subdue everyone's enemies and who sits within everyone's heart. Only that Supreme Person, Krishna, or Vasudev, can bestow all auspicious benedictions upon everyone, for he is the spiritual master of the universe. So I'll read that again. My dear Aditi, engage in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the master of everything, who can subdue, subdue everyone's enemies, and who sits within everyone's heart. Only that Supreme Person, Krishna, or Vasudeva, can bestow all auspicious benedictions upon everyone, for he is the supreme master of the universe. The purport is very, very long, so please try to listen up. With these words, Kashyap Muni tried to pacify his wife. Aditi made her appeal to her material husband. Of course, that is nice, but actually a material relative cannot do anything good for anyone. If anything good can be done, it is done by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva. Therefore, Kashyapa Muni advised his wife Aditi to begin worshipping Lord Vasudeva, who is situated in everyone's heart. He is the friend of everyone and is known as Janardana because he can kill all enemies. There are three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And above material nature, transcendental to material nature, is another existence which is called Sudasattva. In the material world, the mode of goodness is considered the best. But because of material contamination, even the mode of goodness is sometimes overpowered by the modes of passion and ignorance. But when one is transcendent, transcends the competition between these modes and engages himself in devotional service, he rises above the three modes of material nature. In that transcendental position, one is situated in pure consciousness. Sattva visudam vasudeva sabditam. That's from the Bhagavatam 4.3.23. Above the material nature is the position called vasudeva, or freedom from material contamination. Only in that position can one perceive the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev. Thus, the Vasudev condition fulfills all spiritual necessity. Vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sadur labaha. When one realizes Vasudev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he becomes most exalted. Paramatma, Vasudeva, is situated in everyone's heart, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord says, Teisham satata yuktanam bhajitam priti purvakam buddhadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upiyantite. Translation, those who are constantly devoted and who worship me with love, I give them the understanding by which they can come to me. It's from Bhagavad Gita 10.10. Ishwara sarva bhutanam riddhishir junatishtati. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjun, and that is from 1861 Bhagavad Gita. Bhaktaram yagyatapasam sarva loka maheshiram suhidam sarva bhutanam Gyantamam shantim richjati. Translation, the sages, knowing me as the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attain peace from the pangs of material 
miseries. So here we go. One, whenever one is perplexed, let him take shelter of the lotus feet of Vasudev Krishna, who will give the devotee intelligence to help him surpass all difficulties and return home back to Godhead. Kishapa Muni advised his wife to take sh seek shelter at the lotus feet of Vasudev Krishna so that all her problems would be easily solved. Thus, Kishapa Muni was an ideal spiritual master. He was not so foolish that he would present himself as an exalted personality as good as God. He was actually a bona fide guru because he advised his wife to seek shelter at the lotus feet of Vasudeva. One who trains his subordinate or disciple to worship Vasudeva is truly a bona fide spiritual master. The word Jagat Gurum is very important in this regard. Kishapa Muni did not falsely declare himself to be Jagat Guru, although he actually was Jagat Guru because he advocated the cause of Vasudeva. Actually, Vasudeva is Jagat Guru, as is clearly stated here. Vasudevam Jagat Gurum. One who teaches the instructions of Vasudev Bhagavad Gita is as good as Vasudev Jagat Gurum. But when one does not teach these instructions as it is and declares himself Jagat Guru, he simply cheats the public. Krishna is Jagat Guru and one who teaches the instructions of Krishna as it is on behalf of Krishna may be accepted as Jagat Guru. One who manufactures his own theories cannot be accepted. He becomes Jagat Guru falsely. <laughs> Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tas My Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Viranta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nir Visesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Turu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Be Vacha Paditanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Rasiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare So, here is the position of supreme shelter and the supreme success of life. Vasudev. Vasudev means one who is situated everywhere. It also refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is situated within the hearts of all living entities. <laughs> and here Vasudeva has also been given another position. He is Jagat Guru. All of these positions apply to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In fact, any important position anywhere in the world is Krishna, <laughs> when, you look, when you think about it. No one can be in any important position unless they've been given the sanction by the Lord to have that, either both materially and spiritually also. Prabhupada would also say even the president of a country, he has to get the blessings of the Lord before he can actually attain that position. Although, you know, he may be crooked and maybe when we say uh, duplicious in his activities still, he still requires the, the, the sanction of God to get any kind of powerful position where he's in emotional service. So that's another kind of difficulty, although it appears to be in the form of something nice. So difficulties come in two ways, something nice and something apparently, and what we say difficult. We recognize the second one more easily, and not the first one, because we think, oh, it looks very nice, but... It may not be good for your devotional service, and most of the time it's not. <laughs> so one has to be very careful how to discriminate. Here we see Diti, she's very determined. She has such a determined effort. And because she has determined to fulfill a particular desire, she's acquiesced the favor of her husband, 
who is a very powerful person. He is actually one of the progenitors, um, uh, Kashyapa Muni. Uh, him, along with many others, are the persons at the beginning of creation who actually bring forth the living entities in different types of bodies. And so Kashyapa is not a small person. And he has two wives, the Diti and Aditi. Diti is the mother of the demons, and Aditi is the mother of the demigods. Both. Two wives, both producing opposite personalities, and both have the same husband. Interesting. You understand, because we understand that, that Harani Kashipu and Haranyaksha were born of Diti and Kashapa. No, two powerful demons. And so he's a, and so she is now in the right way. She's going to the right place to get. And what is he saying? Although he's so full of wisdom, and he's so f he can give the answers that she needs. He says, "Take shelter of the Supreme Lord." In other words, he is the perfect representative of the Supreme Lord. One who represents the Supreme Lord doesn't appear to be what we say uh, in competition with or equal to that Supreme Lord. In other words, their representation always comes back to pointing everyone towards God as the ultimate principle of success in any activity. Here there's, there's the principle of killing one's enemies or removing one's enemies. So another name for Krishna who does that is Janardana. Mm -hmm. There's a beautiful temple in South India, in Kerala actually. It's called the Janardana Temple. You've been there? No? Anyone? Been there too? It's a beautiful deity of Janardana. Uh, it's a, a huge compound. We've been there a couple times to see the deity. Mm -hmm. Jai Sisi Panchatattva. It's interesting, Didi, because there's a little. He moves his hand too. His hand moves. He's got his hand up in, in a certain position. When his hand goes all the way down, that means the end of the creation. But it's very slow. It's the universal clock on <laughs> that particular Didi. It's hard to even notice that the hand, you can't notice the hand is moving, but if you come after 10 years, you might see there's a little slight change in the position, but it's still, even that's hard to recognize. So, um, yeah, and he's the one that ultimately is there to rid the world of the demons. I mean, those who want that kind of facility can worship Jannard, and of course that worship has to be done. Accordingly, according to the Shastras. So here is, it's mentioned that Vasudev, in the form of Janardana, is the person she's seeking who will be the success of, of removing the demons. And that is what she wants. She wants her sons to come back and rule. And that is the actual position of the Devas. The Devas are empowered by the Lord as universal managers to facilitate Krishna's arrangement for the, the, the workings of the universe in such a way that everything works according to the desire of the Lord. But when things get thrown out by the demons, then there has to be some readjustment again. The universal management, just like now, the universal management is in a mess <laughs> in our particular situation now. <laughs> It's quite messy, because <laughs> the demons are in control <laughs> right now. They're actually quite, it says when the mode of goodness is prominent, the demigods are in control. When the mode of passion is prominent, the, demi, the demons are in control. And when the mode of ignorance is prominent, the yakshas and yaksha, rakshashas are in control. So that's mentioned in the Bhagavatam in the, uh, in the uh, what is that, the picture of Janardana? The temple in South India? Oh, very nice. I can't see it from there, but any... You, can you... Is that the actual deity of Janardana? I don't know. I just found something from Kerala. 
It's from Kerala, yeah, but let me see if that's the deity I remember. This is another deity, but it could be another Janardhan deity also. This is not the same one I was referring to. He's alone, this other deity. But Janardhana manifests in different forms. <laughs> that could be just the entrance of the temple where the deity is actually situated. Yeah. Um, so, when the modes of material nature become prominent in a certain way, it's facilitated by one class of people. So now the world is in, under the control of mostly the demons right now. But it looks like it because Krishna is always in control, although he allows the demons to be in control. Why? Because people are sinful. <laughs> when people are sinful, and they bring about these lower modes, and the modes, and when the lower modes become prominent, these personalities rise to power in the world. So bringing back the mode of goodness is actually bringing back, you know, the stability that is uh, organized by the Lord for the material uh, arrangement of the entire universal affairs. But the most important part here, and then Prabhupada makes this emphasis, is that Kashapa, he's in the role of being a Jagat Guru or a Guru to his disciple. His wife in this case is his disciple. And he's teaching her where she can go. So one who is in the position of being a spiritual master officially always has to point the direction towards the actual spiritual master. Another name for the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called Adi Guru. That's his name. It means the original guru. So all of the gurus who come in the line in, in different disciplic successions who are bona fide are representative of Krishna. And so a guru is not someone independent. Oh, he's become, he's done some austerities. He's performed some uh, some sacrifices. He's uh, very expert at speaking nice nicely and convincing other people to follow. That is not guru. That's guru. Guru means animal. <laughs> so that kind of guru we don't want because and there's many of them today. I'm thinking of one right now in South India, but I better not mention his name. <laughs> So uh, there are many like that who have so many followers and they surreptitiously or pretentiously take the position of being a spiritual master because they have some material powers. And people nowadays are fooled by people who have material powers and appear to be spiritual. And then they attract their, you know, people in general because People in general are still looking for material benefits. So when the guru promises, oh, well, you know, if you worship me and if you chant this mantra and you give me certain amounts of money, then you can actually also be wealthy. You can have some power. You can be able to, you know, manipulate. I remember when I first came in contact with spirituality. This is even before I came in contact with Krishna consciousness way back. I was, I guess I was about, how old, about 22 maybe, 21, 22. Um, I got in contact with this one particular, I thought it was a spiritual group, yeah. and um, they were chanting these mantras, and the mantra chanting was nice. It was very nice mantra chanting. And then uh, they also had a book full of mantra chantings, and that would be a, an extended part of the worship. But people could worship on their own, just like we can chant Hare Krishna on their own. You can chant in your own home and chant these mantras. But then every month, I think, they would have in a, what they call a grand meeting with all the disciples in the area. And they would all come. And, <clears throat> and then most of the meeting was about people getting up and telling their personal story 
on how after coming to this movement how their life has changed for the better and they always describe how their material life increased I couldn't find a job it was so difficult but since I've been practicing you know, I, I got not only a job I got the best job and I got a wife I got this I, you know, in other words everybody got something <laughs> <laughs> something material. So, and then they would have this big brass band with tubas, you know, and clarinets and all kinds of, you know, you know, instruments from like, you know, what they call it, symphonies. And then when they somebody would announce their material success, they would all blow the instruments. Everyone would be I thought that's the end of that. I quit. <laughs> I got out of that fast. I didn't. I thought this is bogus. <laughs> that wasn't what I was looking for. <laughs> but the mantra chanting was powerful. Later on, I found that it was chanting particular names of demigods. That's what it was. It was chanting to the demigods, and these particular mantras were were worshiping them, and therefore the demigods fulfill material desires like that. Hmm. Like that. So, you know, this goes on in today's world and it's quite popular everywhere, especially in Western countries where people come from India or other Asian countries and they uh, take advantage of Western people who don't have very little knowledge of spirituality. And they present their programs. And um, because they can speak nicely and they also have some power. And they gain some followers. They gain some wealth. They gain some prestige. They look pretty good from the from the materialistic point of view, but there's nothing spiritual about them. <laughs> Although they may dress in some kind of, you know, religious garb, it's all material. That's all it is. It's usually a combination of the modes of goodness and passion mixed together. That's all it is. And they cheat people. But Prabhupada, Prabhupada would always, when Prabhupada came, he was always preaching surrender to Krishna. Learn about Krishna. Krishna is your father. Krishna is your well-wisher. Krishna is your friend. Everything you're looking for in life, you can find in Krishna. So Prabhupada's preaching was always directing towards Krishna. One time he said something, that appeared to be a little bit different than what he was normally preaching. This was back in the old days. This is a nice little story. Because the devotees were still new. They were in 26 Second Avenue. They only only been in the movement about a year. And Prabhupada used to say, anyone who says he's God, G-O-D, is dog, D-O-G. <laughs> He was speaking very strongly. And he would say that occasionally in his lectures. So one time in one of his lectures, just after he gave an initiation, this was the first initiation he ever gave, then he gave a little lecture. And he said at the end of the lecture, and the disciple must see the spiritual master as God. And then he walked off. <laughs> he, he left the whole assembly after he said that. And now there was a shock wave going through the devotees, and they thought, oh my God. Before he was saying anyone who says he's God, he's dog, and now he's saying he's God. <laughs> but one devotee was a little bit perceptive amongst them, everybody. He said, no, he's not saying he's God. He said we should see him in that way, and that way we should worship God by worshiping him in that same way. In other words, we treat the spiritual master as if we treat the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the actual etiquette. Because of the full representation of the Supreme of the Spiritual Master of the Supreme Lord. And therefore he just takes whatever you offer to him and he offers it to Krishna. Like that. He becomes a transparent medium. But nowadays, you know, people want to present themselves as gurus. And they don't have that transparency, <clears throat> nor do they have any clear idea what is the Supreme Lord. 
And so they accept everything from themselves. And then what happens after some time, you know, they get involved with one of their female disciples and then they leave. <laughs> so that usually happens all the time. <laughs> It'll happen again. <laughs> they just, you know. <clears throat> So this is, this is, but here you get the real clear understanding of what it means to be a spiritual master. One who <clears throat> directs one towards the real spiritual master, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself. <clears throat> now it's interesting, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he is God and he did the opposite. <laughs> He directed people away from him as being the Supreme Lord because he was trying to make a particular point in a strong message for those who claim to be in that position that he was presenting himself as just a personality in the material world who is a devotee of God but not God himself. And he did that just to dis derail or to explain uh, expose those who claim to be God who are actually not. So Mahaprabhu was teaching that from the other position. But he was the Supreme Lord himself. So this is a very uh, important uh, purport that Srila Prabhupada gives here, the importance of training others and pushing them towards Krishna and not pushing them towards oneself. As soon as one becomes the object of the worship of their disciples, then one becomes what is called, what's the word? Asara. Asara. Asara means useless. <laughs> um, just like when, uh, during, during the Gaudiya Math, when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati just before he left, he gave instructions to his disciples. Create a governing body commission to manage the society. And he didn't appoint anyone as the next spiritual master. He wanted a GBC to manage the society. But as soon as he left, two prominent preachers started both claiming that they were the actual successor of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And there was a big contention and therefore the, the disciples more or less went into two groups, one supporting one of them and one supporting the other. And there was a third group who didn't support anybody. So the whole Gaudiya Math kind of splintered because of these two personalities who didn't follow the instructions of their spiritual master and claimed to be the next successor to their spiritual master. And that wound up in court, which stayed in court, Prabhupada even said when he was here, it's still in court, and that was 40 years later. Almost 40 years later, Bhakti Siddhanta left in 1936 Beginning of the first day of January 1937, he left. January 1st, 1937. And uh, Srila Prabhupada, 1976, 77, was saying the, le the, lega the, leg the legation, what is it, the litigation is still going on. Who is fighting? They're fighting for who's going to be the next heir to the Gaudiya Math. And therefore, Prabhupada writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, they have become asara. <laughs> asara. Asara means useless. They don't represent anything like that. So one should carefully uh, follow the instructions of the spiritual master. And one who's in a position of the spiritual master never claims to be a spiritual master, although he, he or whoever is in that position can act in that capacity, but to direct them towards their spirit, his spiritual master, in our case, Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada will always direct you towards Krishna. <laughs> and so that is the importance. This is, this is called transparent by immediate disciplic succession. The transparent 
via media, the media becomes transparent when the those who are representative stay in the role of representative and don't become the object of the worship, like that. Mm -hmm. So this is very important. And all of their instruction is worship Krishna. <laughs> what is that? Bajagovin and Bajago Bajagoranga, Laho Goranga, Taho Goranga Namre. Just worship Goranga. Sing the glories of Goranga. And then there's one other one. Bajagoranga, Laha Goranga, Kaha Goranga. Yeah, Nadia Gudrumi Nityananda Mahajan. Yeah. That's that's by Bhakti Vinod, I think. I'm not sure. But everyone all great souls who are actually great souls are always pointing the thing the, the direction towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the object of shelter and the object of success in devotional service, so the object like that. Okay, so any questions, comments? Sh uh, okay, okay, Somya Datri. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a wonderful lecture. Um, I'm only thinking, uh, and we sometimes uh, talking about this point, uh, how to serve, uh, you said, serve uh, spiritual master like uh, worship Krishna, serve Krishna. But uh, usually, often, it's uh, easier to serve Guru yeah. Spirit our master because it's feelings well, that's, are That's what it deeper. means. Yeah. Serving guru means serving the instructions of the guru. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. And uh, it's uh, more deeper feelings when uh, my experience, when I cooking for Spirit our master for you or cooking for Krishna. It's different because it's Krishna is Well, you so, should you so should offer uh, well, yeah, but you're okay. I'm the one that has to take it and offer it to Krishna. That's my that's my service. Mm. Okay, this I <laughs> <laughs> you're doing the right thing. To serve the spiritual master means to serve the sp the supreme Lord by serving his representative. If I don't have that position as representation, representative, then what, I'm just nobody. Mm. <laughs> I'm just another guy on the block. <laughs> but, but if I can represent, and that is my service, then that is my, you know, then you serve the Supreme Lord by serving the spiritual master. Mm. You're serving both, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the spiritual master and the supreme lord don't have different desires or different demands. It's the same. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Is that clear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Uruguay. Uh, uh, Maharaj, thank you. The lecture was uh, mostly about uh, what it means, ne, the, what, who is the genuine spiritual master. And in between you, you mentioned uh, one person in sa South India. Uh, I don't know, I was also thinking of, of one person uh, which I, uh, which I uh, get uh, acquainted with uh, during Corona. Uh, there, there was on on internet always one face, and I said I will not look it. Uh, but that at one point I look it up, 
and went through some of his lectures and, and it looked his score was not so bad. He was not claiming he is God and so on. And I thought he is preaching some sattva gun. So uh, uh, I don't know if I made a <laughs> correct conclusion, but, but is it possible that this other uh, gurus who are not in this, this applic succession, that they are useful for, uh, to some extent? No, not at no? all. No. I mean, he is a worshipper of Shiva, I think. He's yeah, they claim that. <laughs> but Shiva is worshipping Krishna or so, Ram. So even if he is promoting sattva gun, uh, it's, it's not uh, when a it's wife, bad. When a wife goes outside of her husband to go to another man to get what she needs, she's a prostitute. <laughs> So we are, if we want to actually execute devotional service in a proper way, we stay within the confounds of Prabhupada's teachings. Prabhupada gave everything. He, we don't need to go anywhere. I mean, I, I didn't feel so much endangered for myself. But you were looking around. Yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> no, no, but... But no, it's it's. Yeah. I, I have to I have to put this into context. Some curiosity. No, no. It it. I'm I'm sorry. Maybe I, I'm not saying you're not right. It was curiosity, but but for a specific purpose because uh, everybody was mentioning his name in 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 uh, when I was uh, doing, for example, Sankirtan. So I I thought I have to look at the person so so that I can speak, uh, respond. Uh, I don't know what he's saying. Th that, that was mostly my interest, yeah. not. Not that I want I to just would tell these other people, you know, just <laughs> go to Prabhupada's, they don't... <laughs> you know, everything is there. You, could you imagine if each time another one of these persons popped up and somebody follows them, you have to go do research on what they do? You become... You could, if you hear certain things, you might also think they're okay, but they're, they might not be. The Mayavadis, the impersonalists, they also use forms and chant mantras, and it looks good. But they, their principle is you, the forms and the mantras are meant to take you to the unmanifested. But they don't tell you that. They say these forms are actually elevations to the higher consciousness. And the higher consciousness is the unmanifested or the impersonal. That's most of them. They all preach like that. Hardly few, very few preach the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Yeah, it's really, many of them really hide a lot of their uh, goals to their followers because they just present basic stuff. Just like when Prabhupada was here. Uh, about three or four yogis, different people who had different gurus, they came to Prabhupada and they were really wanted to congratulate Prabhupada for preaching Krishna consciousness. They were preaching something different or preaching some, a mixture of Krishna consciousness and other, other consciousness. So one of them as a spokesman for this group, as a few of them came, they said, oh, uh, Bhaktivedanta, you have done something wonderful. We never thought it was possible to preach, you know, bhakti to the Westerners. And Prabhupada, you what Prabhupada said? He said, if you know what is the actual truth, why are you cheating people? That's what he said to them. <laughs> he wasn't interested in all their eulogies about him. If you're coming as a guru, but you're thinking, well, I have to cheat, get something different because if I don't, if I teach the highest, I get no followers. And Prabhupada said also, yeah. He said, I, I'm not, I was, you know, when I first got here, when they hear me saying what I'm saying, they'll say, Swamiji, please go home. <laughs> no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. Prabhupada didn't, didn't change that. And he said, I don't care if and nobody comes. 
But a lot of people did come, <laughs> somehow. Because Prabhupada was teaching the highest, and he wasn't gonna, gonna compromise just to patronize people's sentiments, which all these other gurus do. That's what they do. They look for an inn to see what people like, and then they pick off on that, and then they preach in that way. They mix it in with some spirituality. <laughs> They're interested in yeah, they're interested in followers, they're interested in some wealth. Like that. So yeah, so Prabhupada everything you need to know, all you have to do is if you if these people come to you, you just ask them what is this what is this person talking about? And then when you ask them what the, this person is talking, then you just explain it from the Krishna conscious perspective. It's not important to go investigate these gurus and just see what they're about. You know, you can get lost in this forest of no la no man's land, and it just because they're expert at just making statements that sound good, but it's just you know. And they're all over the internet. And as soon as the coronavirus came, they were jumping on Facebook and YouTube like crazy, you know. <laughs> we did the same thing, but everybody was jumping on the media as soon as, you know, corona came because now the media was the biggest thing for reaching people. Yeah, and Prabhupada said, if you hear something and it causes some doubt in your Krishna consciousness, then it could ruin your spiritual life. Because one of the th powers that these yogis have is the power of speech. It's a mystic power. They know how to speak in such a way as to control people's minds. It's not so much what they say, it's the power of this charismatic way of speaking which is a mystic power. You can learn how to do, you can learn that. It's one of the eight mystic powers. That's why, you know, people follow so many different wrong ways because the the leaders are very, just like this guy, Jim Jones. This was, you remember the Jim Jones? You remember him? This guy was, you know, he was a charismatic spiritual leader. And so, in, uh, he was preaching in Africa, I think. Yeah, and he he told all his persons, he said, we should all take poison and die. So 900 people took poison and died, the whole community. He convinced them all that this is the, what they should do. <laughs> and even today people talk about this Jim Jones, you know. Yeah, powerful, charismatic guy, but what was he saying? You know, the way to, to happiness is take poison and die. <laughs> and they did it. 900 people. It was recorded, yeah. And so, yeah, they have the power of speech like that. And it's, it's a mystic power. So you have to be careful when you listen to these people. They sound very convincing, some of them. Really convincing. And some of them will tell you, well, you know, what you know is nice, but I can take you to the higher realms of knowledge. Yeah. And But one person who was very enthusiastic to destroy that was Bhakti Churu Swami. He was really good. He, he, he was able to explain clearly that everything you're looking for and more is there in Prabhupada's books, his teachings, his lectures. You don't have to go anywhere. It's all there. And he showed it by example, not only mentioning it, but he was always showing how to understand Prabhupada's words that where you can understand even that Prabhupada's speaking from the highest platform sometimes of spiritual, you know, realization. In his books, mostly in, Ch in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yeah. 
So uh, I think you, you, you're wasting your time and energy. If you want to help these people who are on the wrong path, you can, exp you can explain it from Prabhupada's perspective. Yeah. The more we learn, learn Prabhupada's arguments and then present that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to become a criminal to understand what criminals are like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this very important class explaining the bona fide guru and false guru. I think this understanding is very important for us because uh, today, as you said, in this internet age, it's so easy to get sucked into the wrong road and get swayed by all these things. So thank you very much for explaining this point. Be careful. Yes, yes. I understand the dangers. It's quite significant. The second thing I wanted to say was how merciful Lord Chaitanya is. He's the Lord himself, the most powerful person ever. And he takes the position of a humble devotee just out of his causeless mercy to teach us that this is the path we should follow. So right. I was just amazed by that mercy. Well, that shows the importance of this pr particular principle we're discussing. Hmm. Because this is the world, the world goes on. But people become teachers and are not qualified. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And people don't know the criteria for evaluations. Mm. Again, if people speak, speak convincingly, that seems to be their criteria. There was this, you know, there was this one Yogi Guru Maharaj Ji. <laughs> I remember I joined the same time and he was popular in the same area where his where his ashram was. I was in Denver, Colorado in America. And a guy, he was like 11 years old and he claimed to be Krishna and he used to dress up as Krishna. He would wear the yellow dhoti and, you know, a peacock feather, come out in public, and then speak. And Prabhupada was, you know, when Prabhupada heard about him, he, he said, you know, he's just a, a dog. Wasn't his mother the one who yeah. did all that, made him into that? He had a brother who was an older brother, and it was interesting what happened was he came and he was his mother was supporting him. And he came actually from the Himalayas. And he had a he had an ashram in the Himalayas. And so he came with his mother. But then his brother, who was older, claimed that he was Krishna and not, not his younger brother. So then there was a big court case. You know, two brothers, which one is the real Krishna? Yeah, it was in the United States and went to court. And the judge got, the judge, they actually went back to India. They went, they went back to India, because in India they take these cases, you know. Who's God? <laughs> Who's the real God? Yeah. And so they went back, actually, the judge was actually saying, what is this anyway? So he threw the whole thing out, and he said, this is all oh, this nonsense. He threw the case out. <laughs> this is useless. Who is the real Krishna? Is it the older brother or the younger brother? <laughs> so Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was hearing about him, <laughs> this is funny, he told, he told the devotees, he said, kick on his face with boot, you should throw a pie in his face and you should pass urine in his face. <laughs> Prabhupada said that. So one devotee thought this is a very good instruction. 
So he actually made a plan to carry out Prabhupada's instruction. So this was told to me directly, so I know this is an authentic story. So he was having his big assembly and all of the and all of his followers were there. So he was on stage dressed the way he was. So this devotee came and he had a big chocolate cream pie and he stood in the, he sat in the first row. He got a chance to sit in the, he made sure. So during his lecture, he just stood up and threw the pie right in his face <laughs> in front of all of his followers. <laughs> And then, of course, his followers got angry and they grabbed the devotee and then they took him into the back room and then, and then they said to the devotee, <laughs> you know, why did you do that? He said, well, he said, he's, and, and, uh, and then the devotee said, well, why didn't, if he's God, why didn't he stop me? That, that was, yeah. If he was God, why didn't he stop me? And they said, well, that was his Leela. <laughs> and then I remember something went wrong with his position. And his followers were running to the, to the temple. I was there at the time. And they were coming to us and saying, we need some shelter. Our guru is in trouble. <laughs> so, we were happy to welcome them, you know, and so we did. We gave him some shelter. But what he would do, he had this power, he would touch you on your head with his finger, he, and he, all, all, and then all of the kinds of lights would go off and sounds, and, and, and he would give you the knowledge. That's what it was, just by you're enlightened. So the, the people would feel these, you know, sensations in their brains and like lights going off and sounds and all kinds of things. That was the transformation of the power. So that's what he was doing. <laughs> and then he would feel so, I don't know how long it lasted, but anyway, because I never did it. But, you know, this is, you know, Prabhupada talks about that one guru where he said, I will give you the knowledge. And then he touches his guru on it, his disciple on the head. And then after he does that, the guru just falls and he starts crying. And the divine disciple says, why are you crying, Guru Maharaj? He said, I've given you everything, now I have nothing. <laughs> Prabhupada said, <laughs> What kind of guru is that? <laughs> and so there's a whole list of these guys all over the place, you know. And so, I mean, you know, now they're more sophisticated. They have their different ashrams. Mm. I can name so many of them, but I won't because it's not not the position of Bhagavatam to glorify these guys. But you know, therefore, Prabhupada used to come and said, you know, I'm not saying I'm God. I'm saying I'm the representative of God, and Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, and he showed by Shastra. Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for this lecture. I'm wondering, <clears throat> into this verse, we we're reading how Krishna is uh, present in each and everyone's heart, uh, would throwing a cake in uh, a parcel of Krishna still be a fence, or that is actually some of his leelas? <laughs> or, Put I don't the know. microphone down a little bit, yeah, okay. Now go ahead. Um, we read today that uh, how Vasudev Krishna is present in the heart of all living beings. So, uh, in this case, as you're mentioning, uh, Prabhupada gave the instruction to be on 
this person that's